Shortly thereafter that, I called my mom, hoping she would get there before he came out of the bedroom, terrified that he would come after me again. To my relief, Ashley's mom came into the kitchen. I remember being relieved because whenever Ashley's mom was around, nothing bad ever happened. And when my mom finally came, Ashley was begging me, please don't leave, please don't leave. And I knew there was fear in her. She was afraid of this man. I told her we'll meet at the park later after I come home. So that's what we ended up doing. And I ended up going home and we met at the park later because I felt like it was my way of getting my best friend out of that house of terror as a little six and a half, almost seven year old. At that point, I would never want to spend the night at Ashley's again. She ever asked me again, I said, let's spend the night at my house. Don't spend the night at mine. But as I told you, playing at Ashley's house during the day is safe. Nothing bad ever happened. So just weeks before my seventh birthday, when Ashley and I, a cold January day, asked me to come play at her house, I did. Playing at her house, playing in her back bedroom, we're playing with that dollhouse that we played with hundreds of times. Sitting there playing with her dollhouse, Ashley gets up to use the bathroom. I'm sitting there playing with these two Barbies. Here Ashley come back in. Well, I can't see the door because the dollhouse is bigger than me. So when Ashley didn't respond to my question, holding these two little dolls, I peered my head over the dollhouse, looking to see why she was not responding. Standing there was Ashley's uncle, who had been sleeping, locking the bedroom door. Now I'm clutching these dolls in my hands, terrified of what this man is about to do, fearing what is to come. He tells me to come over by the bed. I already figured that he was, being a terrified little six and a half, almost seven year old that I was. I listened to his demands. Walked over there, wouldn't look up into his face, terrified in this man's eyes, the, the terror that he would show me. So I sat there clutching these dowels with my head down. Eventually grabbed my little chin and made me look up into his face. It was almost like his way he wanted me to see how terrified I really was. Soon, there's a jiggle at the door. It's Ashley trying to get in. She's done using the bathroom. I start screaming for her. First time I'm screaming out to my best friend, what is going on? Even though we both know what has already happened at another overnight. Screaming out to my best friend, hoping she will get in the door. Well, with my screaming, he turns and immediately turns into quick action. Lifting me up on the bed, trying to get my pants off. Well, he's struggling to get my pants off because I'm kicking, fighting, screaming. Getting so frustrated, he realized he can't get my pants off because my shoes are still on. As a young kid, my shoes often coming untied. My dad taught me to double knot my shoes. So as he's sitting there trying to untie my shoes and pull them off, he eventually becomes so frustrated with all my kicking and squirming. He takes my shoes from the heels, pulls them off, and throws them on the ground. Gets my pants off, and in that moment, screaming at the top of my lungs, threatening if I did not stop screaming, he would tie me to that bed. At one point, threatening to silence me with a pillowcase over my head, afraid I was going to suffocate and die in that moment. This predator that he was ends up raping me in that moment, screaming at the top of my lungs. And I can tell you as clear as day standing here before you, I can remember that moment like none other moment in my entire life. The door is open, the toys that were on the floor, my childhood friend, no longer trying to get in, wondering where she went, still screaming for her. As this sick pervert rapes this innocent little child that I was, killing the innocence I have and the trust that I have.